he portrayed? That is the question when it comes to Yaka Pertle. And Jeremy Sohan, can he shoot? Where our guest is, well, let's just say he's getting dragged on social media. You are locked on Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I am your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kings 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Happy Friday, everybody. Hope you're having a great day recovering from another late game last night versus the Kings. Yeah, brutal, brutal West Coast trip, especially for those in San Antonio and in the East Coast. Those Spurs fans that will stay up to the very last second, even if it means 1 a.m. But we're here to talk about Yaka Pirtle. Uh, he's in a contract season, as everybody knows. But the question now is, do the Spurs keep him or do they trade him, despite the fact he's having a pretty good season? And also, we're going to be talking about Jeremy Sohan and his shooting and why our guest got dragged recently by Spurs fans. Hey, thanks for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day, free and available wherever you get podcasts. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season for more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Let's go ahead and bring in our guest, the man of the hour, the man who who has been the target of Spurs fans the last few days. He is my good friend, Michael Jimenez with San Antonio Sports Star, host of Halftime with Jimenez, or Mike Jimenez, I should say. Follow him on Twitter at Mike ESPN. I say, Mike, welcome back to Lockdown Spurs. How are you doing, man? <laughs> you sure love rallying up the Spurs fan base, don't you? Yeah, you know, I'm doing very well, but uh, going to be honest with you, uh, my heart skipped a beat when I saw that Jeremy Sohan liked one of the tweets oh, about all go. the things that we were discussing. So obviously he read this and he knows about it. Well, you definitely um, stirred up the fan base recently because of your tweet about Sohan and his mid-range shooting. Oh, man, you got dogpiled. You got dogpiled oh, pretty I bad. I, I, and I, I understand. And it's so funny because there's a big difference between what I said and what people heard or what people perceived. But, uh, you know, I'm the scapegoat. You know, it's a long season for Spurs fans. They scapegoat. need to direct their negativity someplace. So I'll be that guy. I'll be the scapegoat. There is a um, friend of the show, Angel Gutierrez. He tweeted to Jimenez that he said all oh, Mike was looking for was a, was a heaping portion of attention. And he got it from <laughs> Sohan and Spurs fan. But look, we'll, we'll talk about Mike's tweet that got the Spurs fan base riled up in just a few minutes. But the big question now to start off the show is Yaka Pertle. Look, Mike, he's having a pretty good season. One of the better players on the roster right now. Up in his uh, game yeah. in several. Yeah, yeah. Up in his game in several categories. Uh, looking pretty good. Had a career night recently, uh, scoring wise. But he's in a contract year. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. What what has the eye test, the numbers, been talking to you when it comes to Yaka Pertl this season? What do you like? What don't you like from him? You know, what I like about Yaka Pertl right now is he is figuring out the game offensively. And he's being more aggressive on the offensive end. And that's been the one thing that has frustrated me as a Spurs fan uh, is the fact that Yaka seemed to be tentative the first couple of years with the team. Uh, especially with putbacks. It was almost like uh, he was being very uh, passive towards doing it, not as aggressive. I mean, we see this with Sohan. Sohan gets the rebound, he throws it down, right? Uh, but when it comes to uh, Yaka Pertl, he mm -hmm. seemed to kind of just like lay it in, and it didn't seem like he had much of an offensive game. Uh, but this year, he has been remarkable offensively. Uh, he has a career high right now in rebounds per game, over 10 mm -hmm. per game. Uh, but man, I mean, he's shooting over 65% for the year. Um, that is amazing. And over the course of the last, you know, four or five games, he's had a clip of 74, 75%. I mean, against Portland, he was 14 out of 17 for crying out loud. He now knows his spots and he now mm -hmm. knows when is it time to shoot. And his percentage is so high that I, I, I'm very impressed with what he's been able to do this year. And I think he's finally figuring out where he's supposed to be playing with Keldon and Devin Vassell and, and knowing that the ball's going to come his way more often than it had been in years past. 
yeah, you look at the numbers, and as you mentioned, you know, performing pretty well. He's close to a career high. I mean, just a hair away in points per game this season right now, 13.4 points per game last season, 13.5. So he's on pace to maybe break that. But rebounds are up, uh, 10, or 10 a game right now. Last year, it was seven. His, his Surprisingly, when I thought he didn't have another gear in him as far as another level to go up, he does. He is averaging 3.7 assists. Last year, he meant as 2.8. So he's getting involved in the whole passing the ball, the beautiful game light, as a lot of Spurs fans have been calling this year's team. But still a liability from uh, deep. He's not a shooting big, as maybe a joker is with Denver um, or Cat with Minnesota. And his field goal is, is up this year, 65%. But again, a lot of it is just in the paint kind of work. He tries. He's been trying to do a little put shot uh, outside of the paint uh, near the free throw lines. But, you know, that doesn't really go to that as well. So, if anything, you're getting a better facilitating big this year out of Jakob and a a more aggressive, as you pointed out. But he's in a contract year. Uh, I know we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes, what to do with him or not. But... For a guy that is his size, you can't forget this intangible Jimenez. He's durable. You see guys like Zach Collins go down with uh, bigs, go down with injuries. Z- Zion Williamson go down with injuries. Uh, but yet here's Pirtle nearly playing all games, a full season, and he's very durable. Do you, do you factor that in when you ponder the question to keep him or not keep him? You know, all – over the course of the past two years, I was thinking to myself, this is somebody that you flip for a pick. Yeah. And I've been saying that from the get-go. Uh, but this year, I am not 100% sold on flipping him for a pick anymore. I think that if mm-hmm. the Spurs decide to keep him, mm-hmm. I'd be happy. You know, if you take a look at all the centers in the NBA, is he an elite center? The answer is no. He's not. He's not Nikola Jokic. He's not Carl Anthony Towns or Joel Embiid. He's not, he's not of that caliber. However, he's very good. He's a, a, a second-tier center, and that's still something worth building around. Yeah. So it all depends. I don't want to flip Jakob Pertl for a first-round pick that's going to be you know, pick number 20 or 25 or 30. Now, if the Spurs will offer two first-rounders, okay, uh, I can see that being something uh, worth considering. But getting a, 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 a end of the first round draft pick for him is not really the thing. The question is, should the Spurs pay him what he's worth and exactly what is he worth right now? Right. Well I think uh, uh, around nine million per year. Well, I got a little pushback on that. I, I you know, I, I think he is man, see see that word elite, that that there's something there. I, I I would put him up there with Joel Embiid and just hear me out. Uh, as one of the best centers in the league, you look at some of his rankings at his position. Okay, so among NBA centers, currently he's third in field goal percentage, fourth in offensive rebounds, fifth in assists, sixth in steals, and tenth in field goals made. A little outside of the ten, uh, one through ten mark, he's also he's the twelfth in rebounds and fifteenth in points. That's pretty good, Jimenez. That's really good. Like he's never no. was an offensive juggernaut. You know, his points, he's ranked about 15th among centers currently. But, I mean, when you even have last year Joel Embiid come out and publicly proclaim that Jakob is the most underrated center in the league, that, 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 that goes a long way. It does go a long way. And I wasn't trying to say anything negative towards him. I don't, I don't want to be looked at that way. Uh, I just think that he is not a dominant center. Uh, that's why I don't call him elite. But he's very good. I mean, mm-hmm. I would probably say that, I mean, you could argue that he is probably a top six to eight center in the league. And if you want to say top four, well, you know, on some days he shows that. Uh, so, no, he's a very, very, very good center. And it's something that he has blossomed over the past couple of years. And even mm-hmm. this season alone, take a look at his numbers from October to November, night and day difference. You talk about the fact that he is, one tenth of a point, uh, one tenth of a point away from averaging. Um, imagine a career, a career high. high. Yeah, yeah. But if you take a look at the last four or five games, he's averaging like seventeen, eighteen points per game. So um, it's something that is trending upwards. He is going to average 
a career high in points, assists, and uh, rebounds this year. And because of that, you have to look at it and go, well, we flip him for a pick. Exactly what kind of pick are we going to get for that type of player? Mm-hmm. Last year when the Spurs flipped Derek White for a, uh, uh, a first-rounder, I knew that the Spurs could get a Derek White type of talent. And when the Spurs flipped Thad Young for a first-rounder, I knew the Spurs could get a talent that was just as good, right? So those were logical trades, logical flips. But when it comes to Yaka Pertle, you're not going to get the same amount of talent for a first-round draft pick that's going to be number 22, 25, or 28. Right. So it might be in the best interest of the Spurs and the best interest of Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell and Jeremy Sohan for the Spurs to keep Jakob Pertl. He fits. He seems to be well-liked. Uh, mm-hmm. He is showing that he is working on his game. His offensive game is getting better. Defensively, he brings it. Um, I am now going into the side of the camp of saying we got to keep Jakob. It's All right. affordable to do so. All right. Well, we're going to expand on that in just a few minutes with Michael Jimenez of San Antonio Sports Star, host of Halftime with Mike Jimenez at the San Antonio Sports Star. Hey, this episode is brought to you by Masterclass. Now, what is Masterclass? Oh, Masterclass is an accessible classes, basically, on your phone, web, or smart TV. It offers classes on a wide variety of topics, all taught by world-class instructors at the top of their fields. Each class is broken down into individual video lessons, usually around 10 minutes long. Members can explore at their own pace, and each class is supported by downloadable materials, class guides, recipes, or more. You can find all that available over at masterclass.com. Now, they got hundreds of videos from 180 plus of the top most brilliant minds, and they are available anytime, anywhere on iOS, Android, desktop, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. Look, annual membership starts at $180 per year. Want to learn how to write? Well, they got that. You want to learn how to write a book or a screenplay? They got that. Learn how to make dinner worthy of a Michelin star? They got that. Whether you're interested in whatever it could be, there is a class for you. Again, over 180 exclusive classes taught by instructors you know and love. Want to learn how to sing? Use your voice as an instrument? Guess who teaches that? Mariah Carey. Keldon Johnson would love that. You want to learn business strategy? Guess who teaches that at Masterclass? Bob Iger. Cooking? Gordon Ramsay. They are there, and they are available for you right now at Masterclass. Once again, go to masterclass.com. We are back with Michael Jimenez right here on Locked On Spurs. Follow him on Twitter at Mike ESPNSA. We're talking about Yaka Pertle. And then in a few minutes, we're going to be talking about the tweet that has Spurs fans all riled up. Michael Jimenez's opinion on Jeremy Sohan's shooting. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in much, much more. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Spurs your first listen today. Second listen, check out Locked On Spurs today. Go beyond the scoreboard, behind the scenes with local experts. Insights that only Lockdown can provide available on this app and YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. So he meant us to trade or not to trade Yaka Pertle. So we highlighted a lot of the uh, the X's and O's, the numbers, the eye tests. We got all that covered. But he could net the Spurs. Nice little haul in this supposed to be rebuild season, but they're trying to win every game. But nevertheless, there's do you flip him to acquire assets, whether it be players or picks, for the rebuild now while his stock is high, or keep him and perhaps lose out on that opportunity? You know, the Spurs have a lot to deal with here. If you were GM Brian Wright of the Spurs, what would you do right now with Jakob? Well, I like the word that you used there. You said the word haul. That's what I think you would take for Jakob Pertl. Uh, I don't want to pick. I want to haul. Because this is not just somebody who is a rotation player. This is not somebody who's the sixth man on the on the roster. This is somebody who's a legit starting center who's probably tier two quality. You deserve a haul for a Yaka Hurdle. Especially considering the fact that it's an expiring deal and if you don't want him, you can uh you know, you can just drop him if you don't want him at that point. Fact of the matter is that he has blossomed into a very good player. Uh, he's still in his uh, in his twenties. He's going to be a very attractive asset for 
uh, playoff contending teams. Uh, the Spurs, though, I wouldn't flip him for one pick. You got to get more than just that for him. Uh, I, I was very, very supportive of the Thad Young trade, very supportive of the Derek White trade. A lot of Spurs fans hated the fact that the Spurs traded Derek White, and I was all about it because I didn't see him fitting on this team. And I was like, first rounder, take it. Mm-hmm. Yaka Pertle, though, man, when the season started, I said flip him. Uh, but now, you know, more than a dozen games into the season, I have hit the pause button on that. Uh, he is uh, proving that he is getting better as the years are going on. Uh, right now, uh, I say keep him unless you get that haul. Yeah, there's also the other side of the coin, too, is looking at the rest of the big man depth. And then Zach Collins, you know, we know his issue, you know, injury prone. You know, he has a leg injury right now he's dealing with. Uh, there's Charles Bassey, but unproven commodity of yet, you know, fan favor right now. But can he sustain this throughout the season? And that's it. That's pretty much it. Now, there is the bigger, big prize down the road. That could be Wembanyana if the Spurs tank out and get that number one pick. But again, that's just up there. You know, you have Jakob Porter, who's a proven commodity right now, giving you the numbers, ranking among the best centers in the league right now. The numbers show it. You know, there, there's also this too, Jimenez. And we get your thoughts on this. In the offseason, he made it clear. One, he likes San Antonio. He likes the team. Mm-hmm. Two, but he's remained non-committal. He didn't resign with the Spurs. He and his camp and the team, they know the Spurs got a lot of money to pay him. Perhaps he's betting on himself uh, to test the free agency waters. There could start a bidding war for him because he would enter restricted free agency, Jimenez, and if he decides to go off somewhere else, the Spurs are going to be left empty-handed. Do you think that risk perhaps pushes the scales towards trading him now? Well, that's the thing about the trade deadline. I mean, the Spurs have to have to check the temperature on that uh, going into the trade deadline. If, if, if he is non-committal to the team, well, then you flip him for whatever you can get. Uh, but if he seems to want to be here, you got to ask the question, what is his worth? and whether or not the Spurs want to pay him that amount. Um, so I'm taking a look at these these salaries that these stud centers of the NBA get. And, you know, Spurs Spurs fans aren't used to seeing numbers like $30 million per season. Mm. And I don't know if Jakob is worth $30 million, but somebody might pay him that much. Uh, because, I can see a team paying him, yeah, that much. Yeah, definitely. I can see that. Yeah. I mean, the, the elite centers, like, you know, if you were to take a look at, like, Nikola Jokic or Carl Anthony Towns and Joel Embiid, you know, those are max guys. Those are getting $50 million a year. Uh, but the level below it, you know, the Anthony Davis of the world at $37 million, the DeAndre Ayton at 33 I mean, tell me that Yaka Pertle is that much worse than DeAndre Ayton. They're probably no, not. No. They're probably, probably better. Probably yeah. they could be better or or the same, you know. Uh, but other names out there, like Al Horford, for crying out loud, makes $27 million. Uh, Nikola Vucevic makes twenty five. I think that that is kind of the area that he's in, and that would make him the highest paid spur. But that's his going yeah. rate, the market yeah. rate. It's going to be north of 20 And I put a poll out on my uh, Twitter uh, account, at MikeySPNSA. I have like 400 people vote on this, ask, asking the question, would you rather pay Jakob $20 million or flip him for a pick? And more and more people are saying that they would rather keep him. And I'm, I'm starting to get in that direction too. Because I think he's worth more than just a random first-round draft pick. The guy is showing that he's actually a Tier 2 level center. And I'm not saying that to disrespect him. I don't think he's Tier 1. I don't think he's Embiid. Okay? I don't think he's that guy. But he's right below them. Yeah. And a a hair away. Up. Yeah. Yeah, that's worth something. And he's got to get paid because I kind of feel like a lot of Spurs fans, when they saw Keldon Johnson's deal, what did Keldon get, like $20 million a year? Yeah, yeah. And, and they were like, I can't believe he's getting paid $20 million. I was like, I can't believe it either. Keldon needs to get paid about 28 He took a discount to stay with the Spurs. I'm sorry. He should have he should have been signed for more dollars. He's worth more than that in the for NBA. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but Yaka yeah. Pertle, his going rate right now, I put in that poll seventeen to twenty million. The more I look at it, it's probably closer to twenty five. 
Yeah, uh, I, I think I, I can go either way. And that's not a cop out. Um, I can go either way. If you keep him fine, he's going to get paid fine because the Spurs can absorb a, a nice pay bump. Uh, for him and still afford to chase a big name fr- free agent because other get, uh, players are going to come off the books next year. Fine. But if you trade him now, in, in this season, uh, you know, before the trade deadline, then fine. That progresses, you know, the, uh, the, the rebuild, perhaps his stock rises. His stock is on the rise right now. And right now, if your team trade Jakob, the, it's, a, it's close to the perfect time to strike and make a deal. And I think, teams will do that there's been rumblings since last year that the hornets have been interested in him i don't know if that's cool i could see the raptors trying to get him again reacquire him they drafted him you can see that i can see teams that are right there in the playoff hunt to look for a player in the paint that can push him over the edge if you're going to go up against a phoenix like with ayton or denver with joker and Embiid, you know we need another center we need another guy that can help us contend with that Jakob is there so, yeah, I, I need to see if he still progresses, but I'm good either way. You keep him, great. He's going to get a pay bump. Spurs can afford it and still have enough money to chase for agency. If they, if an afraid agent wants to come here, you trade him now. I get it. I totally get that because you might lose him for nothing. Yeah, we shall see what the Spurs do with the big man in the middle. When we get back, uh, we're going to be putting Mike in the spotlight because... He tweeted something that got Spurs fans riled up about the rookie Jeremy Sohan to the point that, my God, he got he got dragged bad a couple of days ago. We're going to talk about that and more with Michael Jimenez right here on Lockdown Spurs. Follow him on Twitter at Mike ESPN SA. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. Get all the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball, soccer, esports, much, much more. In other words, they got it all covered over at betonline.net. If you love po- sports podcasts, you got those too over at betonline. Go check it out. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today. You've got yourself a mobile device, a laptop, a cell phone, a tablet, whatever you need to do. Go over to the website right now. Go to betonline.net. Net. It is your number one source for sports betting information, and it's where the game starts. We're back with Mike Jimenez right here on Lockdown Spurs. He is with San Antonio Sportster and host of Halftime with Mike Jimenez. So, Michael, we come to the moment of the probably Spurs fans are listening to right now because, oh, boy, you did it again, Jimenez. Every time I get a text from Jimenez saying, hey, look what I just put out, I'm like, oh, no, what did you do? <laughs> What did you do this time? And you did it again. So, Jimenez, do you want to set it up? Do you want to talk about what you put out there in the Twitter sphere when it comes to Jeremy Sohan and his shot? Okay. So, first of all, a big difference between what I said and what people heard. But I'm not apologizing, and I'm not backing down from my take. Here's the thing. I think that people think that I conspire to say what I say to try to get a reaction because that's what a lot of people said on Twitter. They're like, Jimenez was doing a Jimenez thing. He's looking for attention. No. When I have my radio show Monday through Friday at noon, I I am not sitting there going, I hope I piss people off by saying that. I am not that smart. I just start talking about sports and I bring certain things up. And then I start going on it and building on it. And the fact of the matter is is that Spurs fans got pissed off because I said something that they did not want to hear. And on top of all of this, you see that Jeremy Sohan's following the conversation (laughs) online. So (laughs) I, I tweeted out there that I would love for Jeremy Sohan to never shoot the ball outside of five or ten feet, pretty please, sugar on top. (laughs) that's all i said and people got pissed off i'm like dude the guy should not be shooting two and a half to three three point shots per game he is not a three-point shooter what is he doing out there chunking up these three pointers and everyone's saying he's just he's a rookie they're they're gonna start to fall and i'm like no they're not gonna start to fall because he's not a shooter (laughs) he shot 28 (laughs) percent from three in college Right now, he's shooting 18% in the pros. He's not a shooter. 
That is nothing wrong with that. Develop an offensive game inside of 10 feet like Jakob Pertl has. <laughs> Develop a mid-range game. That's all I'm saying. And everyone's like, well, you know, we saw Kawhi Leonard improve a three-point shooting. Carl Schoenig, by the way, tries to, you know, throw flames on me when it came to all of this. It was like, Keldon Johnson uh, missed 25 straight three-pointers three in the G League. And look, he's now a 39% shooter in the NBA. Uh, excuse me, McFly? He shot 38% from three in college. He was already a shooter. He just had a bad month. Okay? Shooters know how to shoot. He was a 38% well, shooter in college. is a 39 to 40% shooter in the pros. He's getting a little bit better. Devin Vassell was a shooter in college. He took a dip when he came to the pros. It's a different game. And then he built it back up to where he was in college and, and is now exceeding what he did in college. He was a shooter. Jeremy Sohan has never been a shooter. So why are they allowing him to shoot the ball so often from three? That's all I said. I never said that he sucked. I never said that he's a bad player. <laughs> I said I've been coming around to him being a first-round draft pick. He's first. fired up here. <laughs> he wasn't my choice at nine, but he's growing on me. The guy gets the 50-50 balls. He hustles. It's a weird thing that he's a hybrid between Rodman and, and Blake Griffin and, 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 and DeAndre Jordan and, and all of these players. It's a weird mix. I'm not used to it. He hustles. The players respond to him. A lot of what he does doesn't come out on the stat sheet. I get it. I like him. There's more positives than negatives. Just develop a mid-range game. Develop a bank shot. Do, do more of those spin moves down low. Finish. I mean, he likes to finish. He gets the rebound. He dunks it back in. Yeah. Love it. Mm -hmm. More yeah. of that. But when the ball gets thrown to you 20 feet from the basket, just pass it. You ain't gonna well, here's it. the deal. Just pass well, it. well, look. Look, I don't want to cut you off. You're on your rant right now. I get it. But let's look at some of the numbers. Let's look at some of the numbers. Okay, so let's yeah. let's look at the shot distance, the splits on that. You're right. At the rim, he's he's good. Uh, 35 shots at the rim. He's made 28, 80 uh, effective field goal percentage at that, at 80%. So there yeah. you have it. All right. So we go a little further out. Three to just below 10 feet. He's taking 21 shots. He minutes. He's made seven, thirty-three percent. Okay. Now, in the ten to sixteen foot range or below sixteen foot, not many shots. He's taken two, and he's made them both. So between ten to about fifteen point nine feet, two for two. Now, sixteen feet to right, like the toe of below the three line, he's taking two shots. He's made them both. Now comes the three point shot. 33. Now, as of this recording, this is recorded before the Sacramento game, everybody. So just heads up on that. He's taking 33 three point attempts. He's made six. Okay. Now, Popovich has made it very clear. Sohan and pretty much everybody else has the green light to shoot. That is just the way the NBA is built right now. They got to develop them. I do agree with the Spurs fans that it is a bit too soon, too soon to start. You know, piling on him the way, well, I would say piling on him, but to call him out as early as you did, as far as him taking the mid range shots and beyond. So you've heard the argument before, Jimenez. They throw names like Keldon Johnson. Keldon Johnson last year was a terrible three point shooter for the, for about first half of the season and then just blossomed second half and beyond till this year. You mentioned uh, Vassell. You know, but many people are not talking about this. His mid-range game between 10 to 16 feet has exploded. Like, it's really good. You should look at those numbers. And then there's also past history from Kawhi to Tony Parker. They needed time. Do you think maybe you're a bit premature to call out yeah. Sohan's shot so early in his not, NBA career? Not at all. Not at all. Because he demonstrated he couldn't do it in college. So that's but Kawhi thing. demonstrated he couldn't do it in college. Tony did okay, it well. Is, didn't is, is really Chip England going to walk in that door? Is Chip England going to walk in that door? Because you mentioned Kawhi, you mentioned Tony Parker, uh, you mentioned these players, and guess who they all they all say is is the reason why they were so good at at, at developing a shot and changing their form. 
the thing about it is this, is that, you know, Vassell and Keldon Johnson should not be part of this whole conversation because they were really good three-point shooters in college. They get to the pros. The game is different. They took a, a, a dip in percentage. It's different playing in a college arena compared to an NBA arena. There's, diff- there's better defenses out there. It took a while for the game to slow down for them to get better. But they were good three-point shooters in college, and therefore they were three good three-point shooters in the pros. Um, I think the one thing that you would look at is say, okay, well, what about uh, Kawhi Leonard? Kawhi Leonard, I mean, is, is, a, is a one-off. And I guess the, the Spurs fans are hanging their hat on that, hoping that he can be that guy. But I don't think that they're the same type of player. I don't think offensively they do the same things. I mean, one is a, is a three and the other one's a four. Uh, the other one's a bouncy big. No one called uh, Kawhi Leonard a bouncy big. I mean, they, 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 they are doing different things on the court. Um, I, I'm excited about what Sohan can do, uh, as a point forward. I know that's been discussed a little bit. Uh, I'm excited of what, what he can do in, uh, moving the ball around, rebounding and developing a, 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 uh, a, a low post game. We saw a spin movie did a couple of games ago that was remarkable. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying that the guy sucks. I mean, that, that's the thing. People are hearing what they want to hear. What I'm saying is, is that I don't think that the three-point shot is actually something that's going to be uh, – that he's ever going to excel at. Were you, were, you say, were you saying about about this this whole idea, too, with Keldon Johnson last year in the first half of the season? Were you saying this as well, saying, oh, he's over, it's done, he shouldn't be taking three-point shots anymore? No, never said that because he was a good three-point shooter in college. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. He was. I mean, Calvin Johnson was a good three point shooter in college. I don't. I don't understand. He, he was. He said almost. But, he's, but he sucked. College. He sucked for half of the season last year. Like it just hell horrific. No, it, it's like baseball things. It's like baseball man. Things revert to the mean. I remember Derek Jeter one time. You know, Derek Jeter was a three hundred hitter for so long, and there was one year where he was like one fifty for like three months out of the season. I'm like, he's still going to be a three hundred hitter at the end of the year. Things revert to the mean. So do I think that Sohan's going to be shooting? 18 percent uh for the rest of the year no it's going to go up because he's a he's a 28 to 30 percent shooter from three that that it's going to go he's going to catch fire for a little bit he's going to get his percentage back up because it can't get much lower it's obviously going to go up but we know mm-hmm. what he is he's a, he's a 28 to 30 maybe best 31 32 percent shooter from three it's inefficient mm-hmm. that is russell westbrook type of 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 accuracy and we made fun of Russell Westbrook. And look how long that guy's been in the league. He's never yeah. been able to perform his shot. That is mm-hmm. not his shot. That is not the way that he plays. You're not going to excel at all things. Jakob Pertl was, what, 14 for 17 the other day? 31 points, very efficient. How many three-pointers did he shoot? Not one. Because that's not his game. That's not what he excels at. Focus on what you excel at and then build on that because I don't think that he's going to develop confidence in that shot if he's clanking it at 18 percent that's yeah. all i'm saying and by the way i did put out there on twitter and i did pin this tweet that if he does get his shooting at 35 percent by the end I of the year that. Or, or at any point of the season rather i will color my hair just like he does i don't care what color it is that he want that that they would want it to be maybe i'll make that a a, a poll on twitter but he's yes, going to get better at that shot. He's going to get it back up to 25, 28, 30% when it's all said and done because that's who he is. That's what I'm well, saying. Well, look, if if any shot outside of a dunk is working for him in this very early season, very early in his NBA career, he meant is, uh, well, his hook shot seems to be a pretty usable. Now, it's a very small sample size. He's taken five hook shots this season. He's made three. But there's something to build on there. Uh, yeah. I mean, that that could have worked. That's probably another dimension to his game he could work on. Maybe we could talk to Drew Eubanks. Remember that? Drew Eubanks went to the hook shot. So <laughs> who knows? But, uh, yeah, it's interesting to see this because the numbers do back up Jimenez when it comes to three-point shooting. Six for 33 as of this recording. But I think where Spurs fans had an issue with you was that they felt that maybe it was just too premature to already say, that's it. He, it's done. 
you know, he's never going to, well, I mean, I'm not going to put words in your mouth that he's, he is what he is. Is You're not going to, you're not going to see that great improvement uh, as we've seen with other players. But there's one thing that is for sure. That's always a hundred percent. Michael Jimenez is a hundred for a hundred when it comes to rallying up Spurs fans. You're good at that. <laughs> you're good and at that. No, think, no matter the shot think, distance, you're good. People think that I sit here and conspire to like develop controversy or I sit here and I talk to you about it or, or whatnot that I, that I'm trying to rile people up. I just bring up a point and people sometimes like it. Sometimes people hate it. Believe it or not, there have been people who have come to my side and on my defense with this. So this, it's not all Spurs fans who hate me with this take. A lot of them came up to me and said, you know what? You're, you're onto something. Even some people in San Antonio sports star who hosts shows. Goes Jimenez, you're onto something, but will they say it? No, they won't. Nope, they won't say it. They'll, yeah, they'll, they'll let they'll let me hang myself when it comes to it. But so, you so. know, uh, a, a lot more positives than negatives when it comes to Sohan. Uh, I'm coming around to him. It's just one of those things where you stay in your lane, man, and you get good at certain things, and and you build on it. it we you you gave the stats, you broke it down. He has the ability to to do very well down low. And in a very limited two or four shots uh, sample size, he has made some shots in the mid range game. Dude, feast on that all day, every day. That's obviously he's shown that he can do that. Uh, mm-hmm. People thinking that I'm, I'm. Oh my god, my favorite one was uh, he's just 19 years old. He managed lay off of him. Dude, we complain about college football players and basketball players all day long. This guy's a professional player earning 5.1 million dollars a year. The guy's a professional, okay? I'm not bagging on a college player. I'm not bagging on a high schooler off of it, dude. And you know what? One last thing. It is on fire right now. (laughs) One last thing. Jeremy Sohan and Sohan did not block me. That's good. That's good. That is good. And that shows a maturity level of Jeremy Sohan that is very, very high because DeJounte Murray, that baby, blocked me all i said about DeJounte murray was i don't like the fact that fans were chanting mvp when he was at the free throw line and the spurs had an awful record well losing record and we're chanting mvp and i thought it was stupid and he blocked me for that jeremy well, sohan yeah. rolling with the punches i like rolling it with the punches. yeah so let's let's rolling read a quick and, 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 love it love it love it and i and i want to color my hair I want to be so wrong out on this. Make me wrong, Jeremy. So and prove me wrong because I have boxed myself into a corner where I win. Because either I'm right and I win, or I'm wrong and it turns out that the Spurs have this super stud player and I win that way. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think everybody's looking forward to seeing you color your hair no matter what. Like you put the uh, Lucha Libre <laughs> face paint on yourself the other night. That was hilarious. Yeah, Michael Jimenez was definitely getting dragged by a handful of Spurs fans a couple of nights ago. You want to see what they had to say? Make sure to follow Jimenez on Twitter at Mike ESPNSA and let us know what you think about Jakob Pertl, trade him or keep him, and especially about Jimenez's take regarding Sohan and his well, his long range shooting, and if um, pretty much he that, that he manages to say that so handy is what he is. He didn't prove it in college. He may not prove it at the pro level. Michael, tell us what's going on at the Star and halftime. Oh, halftime continues to evolve. So now it's called halftime with Mike Jimenez. That's pretty exciting. Uh, it's from twelve to two. Uh, San Antonio Sports Star ninety four one FM, uh, AM twelve fifty, and. Uh, essentially, the show revolves around a lot of sports takes. We talk a lot of Cowboys, a lot of Spurs. Uh, we try to take a deep dive. So the evolution of the of the show is, is as opposed to talking about a lot of topics all in one day, we're going to pick three or four topics and really dive deep into them. Uh, that's the evolution. I still talk pop culture. I still talk nostalgic things. Uh, but it's a little bit different than before, but we're trying to... Uh, to, to, to make it all perfect. But uh, the show's from 12 to 2. Uh, I have fun, and I tell you what, out of all the shows on San Antonio Sports Star, mine is the one that gets the most callers. And people call in without being prompted <laughs> half the time. I want to thank all of you all into the show because uh, the callers are what make the show special. Absolutely. 
And make sure to subscribe to Lockdown Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, YouTube page, Ken's 5 Plus app, and much, much more. For your second listen, check out Lockdown Sports Today, biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. So for Michael Jimenez, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs. Oh, my God.